If you want to experience a pucker factor of 936, then try a 100 knot spiraling descent from 8,000 feet with your engine on fire because one of your fuel lines ruptured due to it rubbing against a hose clamp. Let's take a look at when that nearly happened to me. So, about a year ago, I purchased a 2006 Kid Fox Light Squared from an older gentleman who lived just outside of Minneapolis in the state of Minnesota. Now, before I purchased the plane, I got a condition inspection. Uh, I went to a local AMP and I said, hey, this is an experimental plane. Can you check it out? Can you make sure that everything is okay? So they looked at it and they signed it off and they said, okay, yeah, the plane looks good. You should be fine to fly it back home. About a week later, I got one of my friends who is an awesome ferry pilot. Yeah, Tell us your technique. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a dog. Uh, twist and pull. To join me, and we both flew the plane back from Minneapolis through South Dakota, Wyoming, Idaho, Nevada, and to back to my home in Northern California. After getting it back about a week later, I was installed in a hangar in Marin, and I was super excited about being able to fly my new Kit Fox. Little did I know, two weeks after that, I'd be covered, drenched in 100 low lead fuel grasping for dear life on the end of a fuel hose and trying to reach for a fire extinguisher with my foot. It appeared my new plane, or my new experimental plane, had what I like to call old hose syndrome. So just some evidence to prove that my fuel lines were trying to kill me. This is a picture of the header tank, and these are the old fuel hoses. So this one here is from the right wing tank, and it's coming into the header tank, and this one's from the left. And then this is the vent line. And you can see just how bad the condition of these hoses is around where the, uh, the hose clamp connects onto the fuel fitting. And you can see that the header tank has been leaking around this fitting and it's kind of been weeping out of where it connects. So you can see, what you can see here is the fuel vent line and it's been, I've cut it off here or, or it snapped off, but essentially this fuel hoses in terrible condition. You can just see how old and, and stiff and, and brittle it looks. And if you look at the end of this rib where it connects to the rear spar attach point, you can see where the fuel has kind of flown. The fuel flowed out of here along the side and then dripped. And that's kind of where it's dripped down onto the fabric of the plane. So what I did when I noticed it, I folded the wing back and I noticed that the fuel was coming out of this hose. Originally, I thought it was the quick drain. Um, but then when I realized it was coming out of this hose, I went over to the other side. And I'm like, oh, check that. So I kind of twisted the hose on the other side and it snapped and I did it above the fuel valve. So I couldn't turn it off and it just poured gas poured into the cockpit. So I was I ended up being covered in 100 low lead trying to find, like I was getting buckets and holding buckets under it. Every time I would try to put vice grips on the hose to try and close it, it would snap that piece off and it would snap off closer and closer and closer to the, to the tank fitting at the top. So I just had to get a bucket and hold the bucket under it and it was just pouring 100 low lead all over me. And there was a, there was a fire extinguisher over on the side. So I like put the bucket down and ran over and grabbed it and it was empty. So yeah, it wasn't a good night. So the second time my fuel lines tried to kill me, I actually discovered this about two weeks ago while I was doing my Rotax five year rubber replacement. So what this is, it's a scheduled maintenance that you have to do on Rotax 912 ULS or UL engines. Every five years, you're meant to take all of the rubber hoses and some of the O-rings and rebuild the carbs. So you take all the rubber hoses off the engine and replace them with new ones. Doing this maintenance would have caught the previous problem where my fuel lines had cracked inside the cockpit. So anyway, I was doing this five year rubber replacement and I noticed that the line that joins the bulkhead fitting at the front of the firewall to the gas collator. So it basically is the main fuel line out of the cockpit into the engine bay uh, had been resting. So this fuel line had been resting against a hose clamp 
and it was covered in fire sleeve so you actually couldn't see that there had been any damage and when i took the fire sleeve off the aluminum fuel line i noticed there was this massive gouge in the aluminum it had almost penetrated all the way through the wall of the fuel line it was just about to start spewing fuel into the engine bay based on where the fuel line was situated and where it was running in the engine bay it would have spewed fuel all over one of the exhaust header pipes and i don't know about you but having gas spewing all over an exhaust header is uh just a little bit more dangerous than i like it's leaving just a little bit more up to chance um it's a little bit dangerous it's scary it's probably like this like i think Spewing gas onto a boiling hot exhaust header pipe is one of the more dangerous things that you can have happen in the engine bay when something goes wrong. And that would have resulted in a fire and me having to spiral at 100 knots to the ground to try and land and get out of the plane. So just like the first situation, in this second time, my fuel lines tried to kill me. And let's look at some more evidence as to how they tried to do that. So once again, looking through the evidence folder to see how my fuel lines tried to kill me. Uh, let's just take a look at the gas escalator here and we see this red fire sleeve and it's running from the right. And you can see how it's resting against this hose clamp and look behind it. There's like, I'd seen this before and I'd seen that this had frayed and I actually you know, I should have realized, but I just didn't think, well, where there's fraying, there's probably more damage. And so I took this fuel line off and let's look at the condition of the line. Here we go. So yeah, this is where it had been, had been resting on the hose clamp. And if you look at the, I mean, the fuel lines, it's a 5 16th inch fuel line. And it's the the wall isn't too much thicker than this. I mean, this is probably a I don't know 10, 15, 20 hours away from rubbing all the way through. The plane only had 350 hours on it and I've done 100 hours since I purchased it. So, if we look at that being 350 hours or 450 hours worth of flying and and I do another 100 hours in the next year, then yeah, this is at some point just going to bust a hole in here and then start spewing fuel into the into the engine bay okay so just to wrap it up so what do we have we have two situations where my fuel lines were in terrible condition and uh i was actually flying the plane when it was in a dangerous state so there are a couple of things that we can learn from this the first one is that a pre-buy inspection or a condition inspection when you're buying a plane doesn't necessarily mean that there's nothing wrong with the plane. So I think it's important to do it. It's extremely important to get it done, but I would also just recommend that you double check everything and maybe get a second opinion or find someone that you trust. So don't just go with the, someone that's local to where the plane is that you're buying. Potentially, and they they talk about this in, in how to buy a plane books. They say, get someone that you know to come out and, and do your pre-buy with you and or do your condition inspection. If I had have had a Rotax, uh, a knowledgeable Rotax mechanic with me, then I probably would have found uh, the problems with this experimental aircraft. And the second thing is that Rotax recommend a five-year rubber replacement for a reason. So they're not just saying hey, we think that every five years, if you don't do this, your plane is going to fall out of the sky. They're saying that looking at your hoses, we know that the people that own these experimental planes, they will fly them for 10 or 15 years without looking at the hoses. So we're recommending that every five years you go through and you check every hose. So I'm a huge proponent of that. I think it's one of the best opportunities to go through and um, just double check that your engine is in just basic, proper, safe working condition. So one of the biggest problems that I've had while doing the five-year rubber replacement over the last 
six to eight weeks has been knowing which parts to buy and kind of where to find them on the internet. So what I've done is I've taken down a full list of every single part that I purchased during this, during this project. And I ended up adding like a fuel return line. I changed uh, the gas collator gaskets. I ended up um, changing all the oil lines. I did a carb rebuild. So I, I kind of went through the whole engine. And what I've done is I've con compiled a spreadsheet and put together like a mind map. And I'll do a couple of videos over the next uh, week or so and just sort of talk through the pieces and the parts that you can buy to do this five-year rubber replacement. It's just kind of meant to be a helpful guide from the perspective of an experimental airplane owner. And that list you can take along to your AMP or your mechanic and you can say, hey, this I got this off the internet. What do you think? Should I buy these parts or should I, um, sh should I get something else? But hopefully it will be a helpful um, shopping list for you in your project if you're doing the five-year rubber or if you're doing some general maintenance on the plane. Anyway, thanks for listening. Thanks very much for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, hope to see you on the next one.